Hi, I'm Fel the Blythe. A little bit of a, a cozy setup today for a nice and cozy Q&A. Thank you to everyone who submitted to my Q&A. I won't be getting to every question because there was a lot of questions. A lot of them were very good and some of them I've like sort of joined together. And then I'll be talking a little bit about my goals for the new year, both related to YouTube, Hellenism, and also in my personal life. Definitely a little bit of a different thing today. Oh, I forgot to light one. There we go. Okay, and I have my phone here today to, to read off some of these questions. Some of them I answered a little bit beforehand because I don't really like talking off the cuff. If you want to see me talk off the cuff though, on Monday, this coming Monday, over here is Aaliyah Kai's channel. We'll be doing a discussion on being neurodivergent and being a Hellenic polytheist. So I'm gonna be breaking this up into questions about Hellenism, questions about me and miscellaneous questions. So. A lot of resources on Hellenism is about the myths and things like that, but I can't find much on modern practice and how to worship and what and how to be respectful and just how to follow religion and stuff. Do you have any books, websites, or things like that? I do have books and websites for you, my friend. I tend not to recommend this stuff in my videos because I try to make my videos as many primary sources and modern books and modern blogs are obviously going to be uh, not primary source primarily they're 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 a secondary or even a tertiary source so that's why i tend not to like recommend them a lot in my videos but maybe i should do a little more of that i'm gonna also put all of these down in the description and over here on my lovely little bookshelf as a note the following books and websites are not wholeheartedly endorsed by me the reason i say that is these people by and large are not scholars. They are reconstructionists, which is obviously fine. I mean, I am not a scholar either, but I say that meaning that some people have issues with their sources. Some people have issues with the organizations as a whole. Some people have issues with things that they've said. Yeah. Just know that whenever we're talking about modern people, especially modern people in the community, there's always going to be issues. And I have issues with pretty much everybody <laughs> that I'm going to list. And that's not to say like, I dislike them. I'm sure people have issues with my stuff. I mean, I have issues with some of my... And when I say issues, it's not always like they're a terrible person. It's like, well, they said something that is not a source or they didn't source something well. So keep that in mind. Okay, so here's some websites. Kalinion, they're a Hellenic polytheist organization in the United States. They have a wonderful collection of festivals and various other blog stuff. Now, Kalinion as an organization does have issues. I'm not going to get into all of those issues, but just keep that in mind. Bearing the Aegis. Bearing the Aegis, my issue with Eleni is that she sometimes doesn't provide sourcing on her blogs. Like she's very, like she writes very academically, but sometimes she doesn't always like provide her bibliography and her blog is just a treasure trove of information. She's very reconstructionist, so she's very traditional. Grape and Fig, Grape and Fig Aurora, who some of you may know in the community, they have a Tumblr blog, which is usually not a place that I recommend. But Grape and Fig also has like a, a normal website as well, but Grape and Fig really does wonderful work in the community. I will also link their 2022 festival calendar below as well. Grape and Fig does some wonderful, easy to digest writing on Hellenic polytheism and especially more advanced topics like how to create your own festival. And what do you do when there is an unknown God that you feel called to, but most information about them is scarce. Now for YouTube, there's actually not a lot of YouTubers out there and part of the reason I started YouTubing. There's Pick the Pagan. Pick the Pagan is very, his videos are very, very short and there are a lot more of his own like philosophical musings on religion than they are like any sort of historical basis. So it can be nice to see how just another practitioner lives their normal life. He also posts a lot of his altar setups. Then there is Aaliyah Kai, who I mentioned already and have mentioned a couple times. Wonderful YouTuber. They talk not only about the history and the academic side of Hellenic polytheism, but they also talk a little bit more about the modern side and how they personally interact with this, as well as activism topics, like political topics, topics like uh, indigenous activists that you've never heard of, or their most recent video, I don't know if it'll be out by the time I release this, it'll be about latent Christianity. So they talk a lot about things that are not just Hellenic polytheism history, but also community discussions. Okay, now for books. There's actually, hmm, not a lot of books out there that are still in publication. There's Old Stones, 
New Temples by Drew Campbell, which, I mean, I've, I, I have issues with, but it's actually a pretty decent read. Unfortunately, it's no longer in print, so you either have to find it uh, via PDF or you have to find it secondhand. Like, I know people have issues with it, but and it, and it is a great one-on-one book. I mean, when I read it, I highlighted everything, and it was really influential on me. So the other book that's very recommended is Household Worship by Labrys. Now, Labrys is an organization that has some issues, but again, every organization has some issues. So Labrys is specifically a Hellenic polytheist group in Greece. Their book, Household Worship, is pretty much unanimously recommended in the community. I have yet to finish reading all of it, but it is definitely has like modern rituals for the Hellenic Polytheist practitioner. If you have any recommendations, please put them down below. I know there are some that have been like released in the past year or so. I have not seen them recommended and I have not read them personally, so I'm not gonna recommend them to you. Folks to avoid, uh, YSEE, Y-S-E-E. -E. Uh, basically, the the Supreme Council of Ethnic Hel Hellenes. I honestly kind of worry that just saying their name is going to unleash the cronies into my comment section. Uh, YSE harasses everybody. <laughs> They're focused. They have ethno-nationalist ideas. If you want to check it out, here's Aaliyah Kai's video on folkism and Hellenic polytheism. A, a question about the afterlife. If my family is atheist and I'm a Hellenic pagan, would I be with them in the underworld? So this is actually a hard question for me to answer, really, because, um... I don't really believe in an afterlife. There is reincarnation beliefs in Hellenic polytheism. I have always, not always, but I mean, obviously I used to be a Christian, <laughs> but I have pretty much always believed in reincarnation. It really depends on what your own personal, like, theology is. I, I know people who do believe in the underworld and, like, believe that they're going to go there when they die. It, it's important to know that you don't have to believe in the common classical view of death. You don't have to believe that we go to the underworld, but it's also fine to believe that and understand that some people don't like your, your family who's Christian is probably never going to believe. You don't want to just... Have you considered other ancient cultures that overlap the period in which Hellenism takes its name? I'm curious on cultural exchange, be records of any... Yes, we have lots of records of cultural exchange between the ancient Greeks and other various ancient cultures. Uh, there's Gallo-Hellenism from the Celtic Galatians, or Galatians is probably how it would have been pronounced. So they were a group of Celts that made their way over to the Mediterranean and then blended their traditions together. We also have the Greek colony of Massalia, which is now modern-day Marseille, which was a Greek colony in the south of France that blended some of those traditions together. There was significant culture exchange between ancient Hindus and the ancient Greeks, especially like those beliefs that I was mentioning about reincarnation. There's also a culture exchange with Buddhism. There's Heracles, the defender of the Buddha, which I believe I mentioned before. We've also seen statues to Apollo or dedications to Apollo as far as the Himalayas. There was also cultural exchange with North Africa, notably Ethiopia and Egypt. Uh, Zeus was even said to party with the Ethiopians in the Iliad. One of his epithets is Zeus of Ethiopia. He was said to go to the Ethiopians quite frequently. The ancient world was far more global than folks give it credit for, like far more global. Why Hellenism and not heathenism? What appealed to you? Or was the choice more spiritual than intellectual? It was actually not an entirely spiritual decision. Back when I was first interested in heathenism, unfortunately there was really just no, there was no creators out there that I did not know 100% was not a focus, not a racist. And that really turned me off. We didn't have Ocean Keltoy or Wolf the Red. There was no guarantee, even amongst scholarly authors, that they weren't just secretly some far-right extremist. And, and that was a major turnoff to me. <laughs> Although there was partly spiritual, I have always felt more connected to Greek myths, even as a child. So there was definitely a spiritual aspect as well. What is your opinion about mythological retellings in books, for example, Percy Jackson, Touch of Darkness, Area, and etc.? I have noticed that there has been an extreme explosion in specifically retellings of ancient Greek myths. My local local bookstore, like not even my local Barnes & Noble, like my local bookstore, has an entire section just on modern Greek myth retellings. I both enjoy it deeply, but I also kind of hate it. <laughs> it. It really depends because I feel like th there's a, a fine line between revisioning and reduction. 
there's a lot of like revisioning to make things more feminist, which sure I get, but sometimes it ends up being far more reductive and ends up being ironically still being sexist. Yeah, I just have a lot of opinions on that. It really depends on the book. I think modern myth making is important. It's also like you have to be careful because like we don't have that cultural context that they did when they were writing myths back in the day. What are some things you recommend to Hellenic pagans that don't have a lot of time on their hands but want to honor the gods? Hi, that's me. Hi. I don't actually have a lot of time. <laughs> Sometimes I worry people see me as some sort of super practitioner. I'm really not. I, I really don't do a lot as much as I wish I did. So one thing that I do is like I dedicate my morning tea to the gods, for example. I dedicate the steam. I sometimes I'll light a candle. Lighting candles are always a good way. So you could dedicate the steam from your morning drink. You could dedicate your food, say a prayer as you're driving, like a quick mental prayer of, hey Hermes, please protect me as I drive on this road. Do you ever incorporate syncretize anything Roman? Not really. It's not for any particular reason. It's it's mostly just because I haven't researched that area and I'm not familiar with it and I don't feel comfortable incorporating things that I don't know that deeply about. Yeah, not really. I sometimes syncretize Hermes and Mercury for travel, but I don't know. I need to do more research into the Roman year before I feel comfortable doing something like that. Orvik hymns versus Homeric hymns. I don't really see them as being comparable, pairing apples to oranges because the Orvics come from the Orphic tradition, which is not at all the same as common <laughs> Hellenism, which is where the Homeric hymns would have come into play. Most ancient Greeks would have been familiar not with the Homeric hymns themselves, but with the myths that the Homeric hymns tell. The Orphic hymns are wonderful poetry, but they're of the Orphic tradition and are thus not really useful necessarily when trying to look at myths that were commonly believed. What part of Hellenism, if any, do you just not vibe with? Philosophy? <laughs> Honestly, it just kind of bores me. Plato was useful for obviously some information on like beliefs and some interesting things like what are daemons, but once he starts talking about like humanity and nature and the will of the gods, I'm like, mm, he lost me Plato. Uh, what is your favorite area to research? Definitely festivals. If you haven't already, go check out my most recent video. It's all about festivals. I'm a festival collector, you could say. Gotta collect them all. What does your daily, weekly practice look like? <laughs> Mentioned this already. I have ADHD, so my daily practice is extremely inconsistent. The only thing that's like ever really like 100% that I do, praying over a cup of tea and dedicating my dinner when I cook my dinner, dedicating it to Hestia. That is literally the only thing that I 100% do every single day. Another thing is that I just like dedicate stuff that I do to them, like spur of the moment. So every week I play D&D. I dedicate D&D to Hermes because of dice. I mean, you could also dedicate it to Dionysus, but for me, I dedicate it to Hermes. And the things like if I'm cleaning, I will say, Hestia, this is for you, or I'll light my Hestia candle as I'm cleaning, as a sort of offering. Every time I shower, I will pray to Asclepius. So it's, it's less that I do th specific things every single day, but it's more about finding ways to incorporate it, it into my day-to-day -day life, which is usually just like a simple prayer on the train. That just depends on what I'm doing that day. What's a good list of starter books? I have four on here. I know that's not usually like most people with like 97,000, but my starter list for you would be Greek Religion by Walter Burkhart, The Iliad and The Odyssey. Don't have a translation recommendation. Just read through one that doesn't use the Roman names. <laughs> Theogony and Works in Days by Hesiod, and then Labrus's Household Worship. I think those are good primers. Where do I start out in research? I feel like I have so many sources at my fingertips and yet I've hardly started. I feel stuck because I don't want to jump into it and go straight into advanced things. I recommend my research on sources video. If you haven't checked that out, go check that out. Honestly, it's actually kind of hard because I'm exploring other certain topics recently and it's been difficult for me to know where to begin. And I kind of think it's kind of funny because like I feel so grounded in Hellenism that like I it's not hard for me to figure out what I want to research but when I go to things I'm like uh so I would say start with what you're interested in I know that's like a cop-out answer but I, I honestly think that that is useful I don't even want to necessarily recommend starting with the myths I mean I think following by the recommended reading I did would be very helpful for you that's what I, I did essentially I think those give you a good overview and then once you read through them or like skim through whatever go with what you're interested in if you're interested in festivals like read this book on festivals that i forgot the title of but editing felicity will put in for me 
or if you're interested in a particular deity, like check out books like specifically on that deity or things that are related to that deity. If you're interested in the Hellenistic era, you could check out the PGM or, or check out, there are books that were called like the overview of the Hellenistic era. I'm not interested in everything in Hellenism, right? Like I'm not interested in reconstructing a calendar. As cool as that would be, I just am not, I, there are other things that I care more about, but some people care a lot about that. So just figure out, like read through those beginner books that I recommended and then figure out, I don't know what you want to do and what you like. Do you have to research into specific city, state, and time period and pick a very specific one to follow? Is there another option? <laughs> no. <laughs> you definitely do not have to do that. I do not even do that. Everyone is going to have a little bit of Athens in their Hellenic polytheism just because it's the city-state that we have the most information on. If you try to reconstruct Homeric age Greece, you're gonna have a little bit of classical era in there because there's only so much information we have <laughs> about the Homeric age in particular and how they did rites and rituals. Some people like are really specific, which is fine and that works for them, but you certainly don't have to be. I'm not. I take from like every era. <laughs> Worst Hellenism pagan take you've ever heard. The whole Demeter as an overbearing mother trope in the story of Persephone. I hate it. I hate it so much. I think it's extremely reductive. I think it's extremely sexist. Verdisa is one of the most important myths in like Western religion to a love story which is like fine like you can worship hades and persephone and love them and love their romance like that is fine but i'm saying like don't don't do demeter dirty don't do it it's just oh it makes me so so enraged <laughs> demeter and Corey were always worshipped together they were they were inseparable if you read the homer i came to demeter Persephone loves her mom so much and that myth is so much about women coming together in the face of the patriarchal Greek society and so to make this story about Persephone running away from Demeter it people do it to make it seem feminist but it just makes it so much more sexist because the whole myth is so much about a mother's grief like mothers lost their children to death Mothers lost their children to marriages. Mothers lost their children to men. It's about a grieving woman who can find no solace amongst the gods and she finds solace amongst human women who understand her. In that myth, Hades is so much more of a, a force. It's just, yeah, it, stop it. If, if I, no, like that is the one, like believe what you want to believe. It's always the female deities too who everyone turns into the bad guys and are like, oh, these feminist retellings, we're still going to make the woman the bad person. And I'm just like, oh. Anyway, multiple things can be true at the same time, believe it or not. What deities do you work with worship the most? My own like little hearth cult, which is like your own personal pantheon, essentially, of gods that you worship the most, most praxis with. I would say the ones that I have the most praxis with at the moment, and it does fluctuate depending on like time of year and what I'm doing would be Athena, Hermes, Apollo, Hestia. Hestia's always there. Demeter. Yeah, those are the main five, I would say. I mean, I do also honor ancestors. I honor heroes. I uh, honor uh, Demeter Kore as the two goddesses. Asclepius from time to time, but my main gods that I tend to go to on a daily basis would be those five. If you could give yourself one piece of advice as a beginner, what would it be? I think it would be like allow yourself to grow, <laughs> allow yourself to change what you want. And also ironically, I think I would say join the community sooner. I think that's going to be it for my Helen section because it's already running really long. <laughs> so questions about me in particular. What guided you to your beliefs and help others on YouTube? Not a question, but thank you. I found your channel so we can be finding it inspiring. Thank you very much. I appreciate it a lot. Honestly, it was a fact that when I started, no one was on YouTube. Like, Aaliyah Kai didn't have their channel yet. There was Pick the Pagan, but again, as I said, Pick the Pagan is often more of, like, here's my own, like, personal philosophy, which is, like, totally fine. But there was, like, nothing that I was looking for that I'd seen with other witch tubers, where they'd have, like, what is Banishing 101 or something. There was nothing like that for Hellenic polytheism, and I really wanted something like that, and I didn't originally want to make YouTube because this is never sort of how I imagined. I got, I've always wanted to do YouTube, but this was not how I imagined making YouTube work for me. I just started because I was like, uh, if I feel like I'll, uh, I, I felt like I would never have the skills necessary 
to do all the research to my own standards, but I was like, it's kind of now or never. So one day in April, I just decided, well, it's going to be now. What is your favorite show or movie? Favorite movies, hands down, Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of Black Pearl. I love it dearly. It really inspired me as a kid. A lot of my chaos, my love of art, and my love of adventure. I struggle with naming a favorite show, but I've recently been re-watching The Muppet Show. I love The Muppets a lot. I love the new Dark Crystal, and I was very sad that it was canceled. What's your favorite song? Depends on when you're asking. <laughs> So I listen to a lot of early music, which is Elizabethan Renaissance music, but right now one of my favorite songs I would say is Fortuna Desperado. Anyway, next question. Do you prefer making videos or making podcast episodes? <laughs> I really enjoy making both, TBH. Uh, I know that's a cop-out answer. But if I really had to decide, editing podcast episodes is significantly easier. However, this channel would be a podcast if I didn't also really enjoy making videos. I, I think I prefer actually crafting videos together in a, in a cohesive visual and audio way. What did you study at university and how did you animate your current line of work? So that's kind of a funny and roundabout story. Actually, YouTube is, is more related to my major than any uh, than what I'm professionally paid to do, which is sewing and historical education. I was a new media major in college. What is new media? Well, new media is things like YouTube, <laughs> things like YouTube, programming. I specifically had a focus in transmedia storytelling, so telling stories both audially, visually, in person, through art and newspapers. That was kind of what my th senior thesis was, was telling a story through an installation that had both video, audio, and like fake newspapers, fake security footage, etc., etc. You wear a lot of outfits in your videos. What are your favorites? <laughs> well, I'm so glad you asked. Here's a nice little outfit. I just tailored these pants last night. They used to be like pretty big at the waist because usually pants don't fit me around the hips. And I also added button tab suspenders in them because I like button tab suspenders. I think they're cool. And I've never had a pair of pants that fit me before. I wear a lot of outfits. Most, uh, if not the majority of my wardrobe now is pretty much entirely thrifted or I made myself, but I will pop up some of my favorite outfits throughout the past couple of years or so. Aside from the classical period, do you have any other favorite time periods? Yes. I have favorite time periods for various reasons. Fashion history. I love the 18th century for fashion history. I love the 19 teens and 1920s for some more modern fashion history. I also love the medieval period for music and the medieval and Renaissance period for music. That's my favorite era for music, it's the early music time period. I specifically have been really into the 19 teens lately and part of its connection to my great-grandparents and also I don't know I feel like there's a lot of wisdom from that time period to be gained because they were really in it I mean they had a pandemic they had world war they then had the economic crash like there's a reason they call that generation the lost generation so there's just kind of almost been like a comfort I know that sounds bad but it's been like I don't know just knowing that folks have gone through this before that we have gone through this before. 19 teens were also a terrible time politically for like a lot of countries. It just feels like I can relate to them in some way. Also, you have a cat. Can we see them sometime? Yes, he actually shows up in some of my videos and I'm gonna go steal him. Come here. Here he is, this is Pumpkin. We're like, where'd you get him? I'm like my parents' backyard. <laughs> He's so mad that I disrupted his nap. I know. All right, go back. Oh god, ah! What hobbies do you have? Just want to say your cat is super cute. That is correct. Here are my hobbies. I have a lot of hobbies. I had to write them all down to make sure I didn't forget. Gardening, foraging, historical sewing, cosplay, trapeze, early music, LARP, D&D, &D, writing stories, writing music, and making things out of polymer clay. 
I do a lot of things. It's the ADHD and also the artist and creative in me is a reason why Apollo is one of the deities that I feel closest to. Miscellaneous questions. Inspired by the trolley problem, one track has all the copies of the PGM, but in this reality, they have been translated by Victorian spiritualists. <laughs> Another uh, track has Victorian spiritualists. Which track would you direct the trolley to follow? Victorian spiritualists for sure. And maybe a sprinkling of theosophists in there as well. I think this came from someone who <laughs> listens to Test Tubes and Cauldrons, a podcast I'm a part of. Over there, I talk a lot about my disdain for Victorian spiritualists and theosophy. Any part of your practice ceremonial? I got a couple of ceremonial questions, which I think is very interesting. Not really. What's weird about Hellenism is that in many ways it can feel very ceremonial-esque, at least in, in certain regards, in the way that like rituals are done specifically. And I always see Hellenism as almost this kind of blend between certain ceremonial, like a more ceremonial nature and folk magic, because I don't think Hellenism fits neatly in either camp. Like, I don't see it as like folk magic or folk witchcraft, and it's not exactly ceremonial, so it's kind of this interesting in-between. What paradigms besides Hellenism are you interested in learning about? I've recently been reading about Gallo-Romanism. There's this book, where is it? Here. Sacred Brit Britannia by Miranda Althouse Green that I have been <laughs> reading. It's very fascinating. Just that combination between Gaulish polytheism and Roman polytheism, which at that point had been Hellenized. So there's also some aspects of Hellenism in there as well. It's been very fascinating. Okay, I think that's the end of all of my questions. I've been recording forever. Editing this is gonna be a nightmare. That's for later Felicity to worry about. So now I want to talk about my goals for the new year. I don't really like setting hard goals because I think the way that we approach goals in a lot of our modern culture is not good. A book that I recommend that is a more nuanced way of talking about goals is called Renaissance Souls. It's an amazing book. I've read it like 3,000 times. And it's especially helpful for people who are neurodivergent or are just prone to having a lot of interest. Some of my goals for the new year is to read more. I really want to read more. So my goal first off is to finish all of the books I started. And that doesn't count like academic books that I piece through. I'm not counting those. There are books that I started that I want to finish. Like half of these books over here, like Sacred Britannia. I've started that in the summer, so I haven't finished it. A bunch of books that people got me for Christmas last year that I still haven't read. Serving Fire, I'm pretty sure I started like five years ago and haven't finished. This book, Beyond the Stars, The Memoirs of Sergei Eisenstein, started that years and years and years ago. Have not finished it. I know... This coming year, besides the books that I haven't finished, I'm going to start with The Odyssey. This one's the Emily Wilson translation, and I'm going to be reading an Iliad. I have to figure out which Iliad I want to read. In terms of YouTube, I would love to reach 5k subscribers. Once I hit 5k, I'm going to consider opening a Patreon. Obviously, once I get towards that number, I will talk more about what this Patreon might be. Spend less time on my phone, I say, looking down. Throughout 2020 and 2021, I actually deleted pretty much all of my social media. And honestly, deleting all my social media, the, I would say it's the single, one of the single best decisions I've ever made in my entire life. Deleting all my social media improved my mental health. I can't even begin to describe how much it improved my mental health. Like, uh, and Facebook has this thing where they let you deactivate Facebook while keeping Messenger. And like, it makes things, certain things more complicated, but it just gave me back my focus. It gave me back my time. And like, I've been considering deleting Discord entirely from my phone. And I have considered entirely getting rid of my smartphone, taking a cue from Harmony Nice and getting rid of my smartphone entirely. And getting a brick phone and then making my smartphone my work phone. I don't know, we'll see if I make that decision, but I'm sick and tired of my life being dictated by algorithms that are profiting off of division and oppression. I've set up screen time on my phone, so it locks me out of apps after I spend a certain amount of time on them. Maybe if I stop spending so much time on my phone and on the internet, maybe I'll have time to journal more. <laughs> Just one of my other goals, I want to journal more. I used to journal all the time and then I got addicted to this thing. The other thing I'm looking up, because <laughs> it's towering, you might notice it in the background of my videos, I have a to repair list. A bunch of stuff that I have had to repair or alter and I just haven't. Like this as an example, this is my grandmother's skirt and uh, made in the 1960s, 70s sometime. I don't remember actually. And it's beautiful, but the elastic is shot. And the I've just been so overwhelmed altering this because it's, she lined it up like 
perfectly, like perfectly, perfectly. I just don't want to ruin that, so I just got to something. I want to get through a significant portion of my two altar list on my, not altar altar, but like um, an actual clothing altar. Those are my basic goals for the new year. Spend less on my phone, journal more, read more, edit, edit more clothes, Pfft, alter more clothes, or maybe reach some goals on YouTube. And with that, I'll see you all next year. <laughs> I gotta pull that. See you next year. That's what my friend's dad always says in that exact accent. See you next year. Anyway, I'll see you next year. Hope you all have a wonderful new year. And thank you so much. Thank you so much for this wonderful journey on YouTube this past year. And here's to another one. Goodbye, everybody.